So a, a, a funny story, when I became CIA director, the security team said, you know, do you have any weapons in the house? I said, we're from Kansas. I mean, that's kind of a crazy question, right? And I was, well, yeah. And I said, I said, Susan and I both carry. And they said, you know, sir, if it's all the same to you, if it goes down, we'd like the bullets going just in one direction, so we got you. <laughs> so we're not carrying tonight, but uh, we all need to be ready. And uh, have you talked about that defense? The defense has to be fought everywhere. The battle is on. We saw it firsthand in our administration. And the good news was, I, I worked for a president who was absolutely fearless about us in letting us go deliver really good outcomes for America. When we did that, we knew a couple things. I, I knew this from my time as a congressman in Kansas. I was telling Dan and a couple others today. Uh, one of my first debates when I ran for Congress was in a place called Kingman, Kansas. There's not a soul in here who can tell me where Kingman, Kansas is, except for the pastor from Concordia. <laughs> We went to this debate. It was a so Saturday afternoon. There, there, there couldn't have been twenty. There couldn't have been twenty people in the auditorium. We took six questions from the audience. Three of them were about Israel and the United States of America. This is how deep the Christian understanding of the importance of the security relationship and the deep history of our two nations working alongside of each other. It's something that's certainly been on Susan and my heart for an awfully long time. Uh, the second question I got from you all today is how do we effectuate this? How do we do it? How do we deliver it? The point is well taken. Words are interesting and, and frankly pretty cheap. In the end, you have to deliver on the outcomes. And so we just kept ticking through them, right? So the first action was the president's decision to move the U.S. Embassy. Yeah! We to to go tear down the legal framework, which had established, frankly, and U.S. policy, if not law, and certainly where the U.N. established Israel as an occupying nation. This is sick, it's tragic, it's factually inaccurate, it doesn't record the history, and so we began to tear down the legal edifice of this. It took, it frankly took all the skill I had to beat back 100 lawyers at the State Department, but it was the right thing to do for America, and the central thing to do for the people, the Jewish people in their homeland. We, you know, I'm so proud of what we did with Abraham Accords, but it took, it took an enormous amount of work. It's like anything, any of you are business, it's like, yes, I was an overnight success in 13 years. Uh, the Abraham Accords were much the same. We laid the foundations with the decision on the embassy. We built up an enormous amount of credibility in the region when we made the decision to strike Qasem Soleimani and take Yay. him out. Yeah. We isolated the Iranians. We, we built up a coalition to help defend the Persian Gulf with the Arab states. We made clear to the Saudis and the Emiratis and the Bahrainis and the, and the Jordanians and the Moroccans and the Sudanese, to all of them, we would be with them if they made the right decision. And ultimately, we had a great alignment of leaders. The Lord was working in a special way, whether it was the Crown Prince of the Emirates, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, President Trump, Prime Minister Netanyahu, a series of leaders who delivered a set of understandings that I believe can't be undone. Because in the end, the Lord is watching and they're good for all the peoples of each of those nations. And so, as part of the Biden administration, we'll try to not utter the words Abraham Accords in sequence. <laughs> but the world knows the good that this generated. And so with that, I'm happy to take a couple questions and then we can get it. The only questions I want to answer is about my time having fun with the director of Mossad. It was just too great. <laughs> it's unspeakably wonderful. Yes, sir.